The year is 1989 and the flames of a new war have ignited. Thousands of square miles of German landscape will become the stage for sweeping battles between the best NATO and Warsaw Pact has to offer. This is Regiments, a single player real time tactics game set during a fictional cold war gone hot. It sees you in command of a NATO or Warsaw task force at the regimental level. I've never played before, but my friends at Microprose thought I would enjoy it. And they were right. It scratches the itch I've had for a modern tactics game where it feels like decisions matter. Regiments is a full release game from 2022, but it really flew under my radar. By the time you see this, the Winds of Change DLC will have released, which adds French, Dutch, Canadian and the Czechoslovak regiments to an already large roster, as well as a new mode called War Paths. This mode lets you play as any task force in the game in a procedurally generated operation, similar to the campaign mode, but different every time. Would you like to know more? Subscribe to the channel for more strategy gaming content as we dive deeper into what Regiments has to offer. The game paints you as a regimental commander in charge of specialized platoons. You must use your limited resources and assets to make tactical choices that swing the battle in your favor. It can present quite the challenge trying to balance unit losses, manage supplies, reinforcements and close air support, all while pushing forward to achieve a larger objective. What I think makes regiments a little bit different is the operations system. Each major battle or operation is divided into one or more maps with events playing out over the period of a day or two, including a night battle. Each stage has several phases, which usually last 20 minutes, with gains, losses and resources persisting through the following phase. The battle zone consists of a number of nodes. Holding these either contribute operational authority the game's currency for upgrades and reinforcements, or victory points towards the operation's main objective. The maps are large and unit numbers are limited, so you must use combined arm tactics, recon, fire support and mechanized infantry to react to the emerging battlefield. Do you divert a unit or two to hold onto a node covering a line of advance so that the next phase provides more resources? Or do you push through the map and hold the victory points expecting to be surrounded and on the defensive in the follow-up phase? There are a variety of battle types. There's standard meeting, where both teams hold equal amount of nodes and try to push a front line. There's escort, where you must defend an entire map from attacking forces, while friendlies try to transit through the zone. Defense, where you must stop the enemy from gaining a foothold in the region. And attack, where you are tasked with gaining a foothold against an entrenched enemy. The AI is surprisingly challenging, able to compile an attack force and press advantages when you are exposed. It makes good use of fire support and tactical support to thwart attacks and can be vicious if allowed to mass all of its units. Like similar games in the genre, like the War Game series and the upcoming Broken Arrow, the gameplay can be fast paced and chaotic. The game has easy to visualize line of sight and weapons range indicators, and that's great because they're extremely important to gameplay. With the defender having huge advantages against ill-prepared assaults, recon is king. You can't fight what you can't see. Regiments differs from other titles in that there seems to be less micro involved and the game is played at a higher level. You are not a sergeant, you are a commander. You don't have to manage individual infantrymen, nor order them to perform basic tasks. Infantry are tied to their mechanized transports, and you give the platoon an order to move, and they will. They have all the weapons that would be expected of a platoon, and they use them without order, if the conditions are right. They can be set to dismount on arrival, and will automatically entrench if left to their own devices. This makes infantry extremely potent tools for forest and city fighting, and are the easiest of all units to replace. Keep their transports alive and you can use battlefield supplies to replenish losses. Lose the transports? Then it's going to cost operational authority between phases to replenish that infantry. The new DLC adds a few units that are able to be separated from their transport, 
allowing things like Black Hawk insertions of airborne troops. Infantry fall into a couple of categories, those being reservist or militia units, regulars, elite, and fire support units. These categories determine their survivability and weapons loadouts. Just like in real life, infantry are extremely vulnerable on open ground and to artillery systems and close air support. So they must always be covered from such systems, moving only when clear or advancing with smoke support. One thing that took me a little while to understand is the power of retreat. The game rewards keeping your troops alive. Through veterancy gains, they gain improved fire rate, defense and other perks. If you are engaged in a skirmish or stumble across overwhelming odds, hit double Q to retreat. The unit automatically deploys its smoke if it has it and attempts to vacate the battlefield to the back lines where they will be resupplied and refitted after a short cooldown. The enemy can kill units in retreat, but if they're covered well, a unit can continue to cycle onto the battlefield and remain at top shape. Supply units can be deployed to rearm and repair vehicles, however they cannot replenish vehicle losses, so keeping your unit alive is number one priority in this game. Scouting positions, suppressing attacks with artillery, flanking, using smoke to withdraw, they're all extremely important. Other strategy games make you feel like you need to cover everything at once. If you play that way here, you may become frustrated. Depending on the task force and the attached units, you will have access to off-map tactical support called TAC aids. Some are available through special events that play out each phase. Points are earned gradually throughout the phase and they can be spent to launch smoke, scout positions, call airstrikes. While you have access to air support, you aren't an air force commander so you don't have control of aircraft directly. Your job is to designate the target and the flyboys do the rest. It's up to you to make sure that you're calling in in areas free from AA or they will be wasted, literally. The battle timer can make it feel like you need to rush to another capture point before a phase ends, but often that can leave your forces overextended and isolated for the next phase. Throwing units at the problem may win you an immediate battle, but losses can leave you combat ineffective for the follow-up phase. While fast-paced, the gameplay does require a small measure of prudence, always keeping the main objective in mind. My first games were met with defeat, because my losses stacked to the point where I had no combat effective units in the final phases. Defender's advantage can be brutal against a poorly planned attack and ambushes really hurt. My early games left me frustrated because it felt like the AI had unlimited units. But then I realized in those situations that I hadn't paid enough attention to the mission objectives and the in-game event system had conspired to defeat me. At the beginning of each phase, you are presented with up to four cards, which have either positive or negative effects or neutral effects on the battle. You pick one of the four cards and the remainders over the course of the operation. These bonuses could be things like free artillery support or a shorter battle. Very useful and powerful if played when you need them most. However, all cards must be played before you receive new ones meaning eventually you will have to use the debuffs, which could range from no air support allowed, to units automatically retreat without orders, or, worst of them all, an extra enemy battle group is present. What I didn't realize at first is that your opponent also chooses cards from their own deck, potentially leading to a situation where you are swarmed with enemies. In this case, the mission becomes survival of the fittest, bunker down and try to slay the horde. The fact that it frustrated me illustrated just how decent of a game it is. I tried to play it like I normally would play a strategy game with, without regarding the system so much and it spanked me. I played later in the night with a fresh outlook and I had a good time. There are many nations to play, each with multiple task forces you can choose to play. Some are much easier than others. During my time yesterday, I Using the Warpath systems, I played as a new Canadian faction as an airborne group, having to supplement below average tanks with air cab operations, and utilizing the ADAT system to lock down the ground and the skies. 
I also played at an East German motorized division using artillery to support infantry advances across open terrain. And as the 82nd Airborne trying desperately to stop a swarm of Czechs and Russians as they charged headlong and over my kill zones. This battle lasted three phases before I was eventually overwhelmed. The base game features plot-focused campaign of several operations that tell a complex story of warfare around the inner German border from multiple perspectives across nine operations, each encompassing several days of the fighting. You fight tactical battles, you manage limited resources in the lulls between combat, and you make operational decisions. There is also a skirmish mode with a varied and dynamic objective, but as far as I can tell, these are just standard one battle fights. Being a single player game, I can see there being some issues with replayability once you master the main objectives. But from what I experienced of the War Parts mode from the DLC, it will basically offer a similar experience to the main operation with a few different options between battles. I couldn't see these with my version, so I can't tell you what they will be. War Paths lets you decide your opposition, the state of your regiment at the start of the operation, as well as damage, resources, and a few other things to really tailor the difficulty as required. The game appears to have over 130 or so authentic vehicles in a multitude of different formations, from the Leopard 2 to the T-72M, the M2 Bradley fighting vehicle, and the F4 Phantom, the SU-22, artillery systems, all from a multitude of different factions. At a glance, we have the Soviet Union, the USA, East and West German armies, Belgium, UK, and with France, Czechoslovakia, Canada, and Dutch coming with the Winds of Change DLC. Each of these nations has their own task force and unit compositions. The game has a competent AI that can challenge even experienced RTS players. You've got on-the-fly force customization, which rewards adaptability. I feel like the game mechanics are very deep, the sound effects and visuals are great, with the models looking very detailed. The camera has a few different modes to capture screenshots and recordings. However, I do wish there was a battle replay feature, as most of the time you will be at max view to monitor the situation. Only a few times did I feel safe enough to zoom in and just watch. The voice lines are good, and not so repetitive that they become obnoxious. They give good feedback of unit losses versus damage, and overall the battlefield is a charm to listen to. The music choice suits the setting and the tempo of battle, with a nice variety of styles and instruments across the soundtrack. I felt like aircraft were way too loud, and they didn't quite sound right. But on the flip side, it served as a great warning for incoming enemy airstrikes. If you leave your established RTS skills at the door, complete the decent tutorial and read the in-game encyclopedia, the game has a smooth learning curve and high accessibility even to novice RTS players. The minimal unit micromanagement will serve as a good stepping stone to games that require more intense micro. To some, the lack of multiplayer might be a red flag, but I would say that mostly single player RTS is a much overlooked facet of the genre. Too often single player modes have their campaigns broken or their enjoyment limited by changes to balance multiplayer modes. Total War. Currently, the AI does a decent job. I have some suspicions that they cheat with unit numbers, but mostly it seems to be able to adapt and genuinely try to press you as a player. I have seen it devolve into Zerg tactics when it knows that it's winning. It honestly humbled me in my first operation. Anyway, I think that serves as a good starting point for anyone looking for a fresh real-time tactics game. I see it as something that I will play regularly for fun, if you would like to see more Regiments content, please make sure to let me know down below. If there is enough interest, I will do a Let's Play of the main story operation, or perhaps a Faction Spotlight video to show the units available to all forces. But I need you to make that happen. 
scream it out down below. Many thanks to Microprose for all the fish. Commander Tyrael, out. <laughs>